Okay, so I've skipped ahead in time a little bit, and now I have a totally filled out form here. So if I were to fill out my form about 20 times, by going to go to live form under the form menu, and filling this form out about 20 times, then what I would have is a whole class's worth of data. That's what I've got here. So I've got a column for timestamp that tells me when I filled each of these out. It's got a column for each of the pieces of data that I asked for. So last name, then all the pieces of the rubric. Now I could work with this data right here inside of Google Docs and it would probably be fine. Google Docs is plenty functional, but I actually prefer to work in Apple's numbers, which is a spreadsheet application that I think is a little bit more powerful, a little bit more flexible. So what we're gonna do is move this data from Google Docs over into numbers. I'm just gonna highlight it, copy, and uh, I hit Command C by the way in addition to right clicking. And then I'll jump on over into numbers, make myself a new document. So I'm just gonna make one on the desktop, you can make one wherever you want. take a blank document and I actually like to start out with a an empty spreadsheet not one that has these headers on it I'm just going to delete this one I'm going to make a new table plain so now I have a nice plain table and if I just paste there's all my data okay now uh, what I want to do in this video is just organize it a little bit make it look a little bit nicer and then we'll actually start working with it, and manipulating it in, a, in another video. So first of all, I'll give the sheet and the table a name. So we'll just call this the name of the assignment, which is uh, session one project. And then the table is going to be uh, rubric data or something like that, whatever you want to call it. Um, and now I need to make this look a little bit better because it looks a little messy. So first of all, I'll just expand each of these columns to the right width. Uh, you can do that by grabbing the edge of the column and dragging it. Or if you highlight a whole column, <clears throat> actually I don't think you even have to highlight it. You just double click on the edge of the column and it will resize it to the correct size. And if I highlight all of my columns and double click on one of those, then it resizes all of the columns to the correct size. Now, I don't necessarily want them quite this big later on, but for now, it's fine. Uh, one thing that is taking up a lot of space is my timestamp. I think I'm actually going to change the format on the timestamp so it doesn't take up so much space. So I'm actually just going to select that whole column by clicking right up here at the top. And then I have my little formatting menu right here. So I'm going to look in the, the little down arrow where I can choose a whole bunch of different formats. There's a whole category for date and time. I'm going to choose something a little bit more concise. This one right here looks good. So now that's a little bit smaller. I may actually hide timestamp entirely later if I decide that I don't really want it. So I've got timestamp and I've got all my data here and I want to let's see what I want to do I want to make sure I uh, differentiate the headers the the rows that describe the data from the data itself so I'm actually going to turn on header rows up at the top so this button right here will do that and it makes a new header row and I don't actually want a new header row I want to take this row right here and make that into a header row now once I have header rows turned on right up here at the top I can right click here and choose convert to header row. And now you'll notice that this is a header. So it's got uh, kind of a bold look and it describes the data that's in the table. And now I don't need this top header row anymore so I can just delete that. What I'm doing is just right clicking on the row itself and delete row. So now I have a header row and then some data. And what's really useful about that is that if my screen is too small, there's an option called uh, freeze header row that I can get at from this button right here. This is the header rows section. Oops, I can open that up and choose freeze header rows. And now when I scroll around in this table, the header row stays at the top. So it's really easy to tell what each column refers to. So that's really nice when you're dealing with large spreadsheets. Uh, some of my classes have up to 60 students uh, across the multiple sections. And if I deal with them all in one table, and having these header rows is very nice. In fact, it's so nice that what I think I'm going to do is take this last name column and make that into a header column so that I'll always have the last name available if I need to see it. So I want to move last name to 
be to the left of timestamp because usually your headers are going to be either down the left or across the top. So I'm actually going to take that column and just drag it right over here and you'll see it lights up. So now I can drop it right there on the left side and now last name is all the way on the left. And I'll do the same thing with header columns that I did with header rows. So I'll just turn on header columns with this button right here. I'll convert last name into a header column by right clicking and choosing convert to header column. And then I'll delete this other column that I don't really need. And now I've got a header column with last names in it. And I've got a header row with descriptions of all my data. So I can scroll around, oops, scroll around anywhere I want in this table, left to right. Oh, forgot to turn on freezing of header columns. Let's turn that on. Freeze header columns. So now I can scroll around in that table, and last name always stays on the left, description always stays at the top. So no matter where I am, I'll never lose track of what I'm working on. Um, the last thing I want to show you before I move on is, well, actually there's two more things I want to show you. One of them, is how to hide a column because we're going to have a lot of columns that we're going to want to hide later. Um, so what hiding a column does is it lets the column continue to exist in the table and continue to be used without actually being visible to you. So this is really nice for hiding columns that are just used for calculation, just used for math, but not used for you looking at the data. So for example, let's say I don't really want to use my timestamp. It's nice to have in case I need it, but I don't really need to look at it all the time. All I have to do is just right click on that and go on down to hide column. And now it's gone. And it's still there. You'll notice that A and C uh, have a kind of a missing column between them. There's no column B there. It's actually still in the table, but it's hidden. So I can always get it back by right clicking and going to unhide column B and get that back. But I just get it out of the way with hide column, so I don't really need to look at it right now. Um, so that's one thing we're going to be doing a lot in the next video. The other thing we're going to do a lot in the next video is create new columns because we're going to need other columns just for calculation. So to create a new column, you basically start right near where you want your new column to be. So I want my new column to be to the right of column C. And I can right click here and go to add column before or add column after. And you notice there's even a shortcut here. So the shortcut is option and then right arrow. So I can choose add column after. And that inserts a column after that one. Or if I want to do a bunch very quickly, I can hold down the option key and start pressing the right arrow. Make a whole bunch of columns really quickly. So I'm going to delete these for now, but we will be making some columns in the next video. And that'll show you just how to make columns really quickly.